I'm Amanda Roberts, I'm the Green Futures Programme Manager for um, City of Culture. Um, you hopefully have seen that Coventry is City of Culture in 2021. City of Culture, for those that don't know, is a UK-wide celebration for arts and culture, but more importantly, it's recognised as a catalyst for investment, innovation and regeneration, which I think you can hear today is abound in Coventry. Um, its previous incumbents have been London Derry and Hull, and I would say that on the environmental uh, and sustainability side, I've inherited a completely blank sheet. So this is the first City of Culture that actually is embracing environment and sustainability, but also taking um, in all sorts of creative ways I'll come to the how do we meet the climate change challenge that we face and our residents face um, seriously. Um, 2021 vision, I would say that Coventry is already a city that is rich in arts, culture and heritage. Um, uh, 2021 gives us a chance to make a focal point to put us on the world stage, but also to take talent to that world stage and very much if anyone enjoyed Diwali celebrations this weekend, we'd see where that, where that sits. Um, so I won't bore you with our connected model uh, in being um, uh, super speedy. But what I would say is that my remit sits within what we're calling a dynamic city in being collaborative, um, where my priority is around livable, smart and connected. But also what I wanted to convey is that it also meets playable and youthful and very much at the energy um, and sort of creative drive around how we engage Coventry, its residents and its visitors, is about that playable and youthful city, and not defined youthful by age, I'll say youthfulness. Um, in terms of sort of what we stand for, I think this kind of maybe is a bit self-evident uh, for Covertarians in the, uh, in the room, but also showing you how art can communicate and connect um, and the keenest one really for us is around how can we activate change? And I think all we're talking about today is amazing, but unless we actually activate human change and human behaviour, we're not going to make the change quick enough to be able to meet our, our, the targets necessary. The one I want to sort of most dwell on here is around us as a city of the future. We just talked, uh, a colleague just talked about 5G, even though it may be some of us in the room that think of the ethical part of high, uh, 5G from a, a health perspective. Um, we are a city of the future. It already is a city of the future. Um, how can we maybe look at Coventry being a creative global <coughs> city of the future? So how can it join London, Toronto, New York, Copenhagen, Coventry? So Coventry starts to see itself again on that global, on that global stage. Our green ambition is saying it's not rocket science from what we've, in, what we've uh, in, inherited, but really in terms of that sphere of influence and what Coventry can take to the next city of culture is about how can we influence Department of Culture, Media and Sport, who are our instigators, um, how can we influence them to actually have sustainability as something that's mandatory, so how can that be our green gift to the next city of culture, whoever uh, they may end up being on the 1st of January in 2025. Um, some of you are probably thinking, what role has arts and culture got in terms of uh, uh, influencing change and inspiring change? And what I'd say is I've got a five-year-old, so I translate a lot of life in terms of uh, a toddler's viewpoint. Um, and as I say to my dad who's 70, the skinny polar bear is not working. We have a climate problem. Stats and facts are not working. We're not cutting through to humans. We're not making change fast enough. So how can we use art to tell new stories? How can we use art to provide a space for creative interaction, to provide a safe space for people to share their fears, share their concerns, but also share and support ways that they can actually make change? Now, I put this together very late last night, so um, I kind of influenced this really about how can we also make civic change uh, and creative leadership change as a green city. Um, but I wondered if this might be Jacob Reed Moss early this morning, feeling a little bit in some, <laughs> in some, crazy, uh, in some crazy, wa crazy water. <laughs> Um, going back to sort of the 5G and about how to interpret that change, this for us is an example of how we are working in nature. Um, Coventry just, and City of Cultures just received the largest green award from Heritage Lottery Fund to look at a city scale at how we connect our residents to Coventry nature and very much that it feels like a hidden nature in Coventry. And these are some of the imaginative ways that we want to kind of look at the world of new technology, but actually bring it back to transporting our residents and young people into a new place where they then are able to articulate and understand their, way, their world sense of nature, but also can communicate that to others and, and engender that sort of nature, uh, I suppose that nature habit. The other part of kind of making us sustainable is actually us as an organisation, and we're currently exploring different ways of looking at carbon management, not least uh, not producing as much as we should do, but also kind of working with our colleagues in the public realm, one around some lovely public art that's going to come into the city centre with all sorts of sustainable credit. Um, cred uh, credibilities, but also kind of how do we leave a footprint for 
the, um, uh, the city and its creative and wider sector. So how might we look at a Coventry Green Code that allows us not just at a mega event level, so when Godiva comes in, actually it doesn't use generators as a natural kind of uh, point of how to power a, a, a festival that has 100,000 visitors. How do we in the city centre enable it to be more flexible around renewable power points so we can plug and play and again offer more <coughs> flexibility for our residents and communities to be using this city, um, city centre as a more creative um, space to, to engage. And around that green influence, kind of drawing together sort of around the transport, um, as a visitor experience, we're working really, really hard from the moment someone got on a train or a bus to come into the city centre so they feel that sense of green, but also how do we mobilise people to go from the city centre into our creative neighbourhoods. And very much the, um, the, the 2.5 million visitor target that we've set is not without challenge when you think about uh, an infrastructure that on um, you know, public bank holidays, the rail service does repair work, which is essential, but it just means we can't get 150,000 people in for a destination event where we'll break world cultural records. So how do we meet that challenge in terms of mass visitation? Um, but we're equally working with 16,000 volunteers and probably larger. Um, and the hardest target that we've set ourselves is that at least 80% of the residents in Coventry, which matters to us most, we want them to connect to City of Culture at least three times during 2021, whether that's the participant, a volunteer, a supply chain, a partner, a collaborator, an artist. It's about that, building that culture habit. But what's very clear today is we can't have a culture habit without an active transport habit. Um, and it really shocks me that even, I've, I live in Birmingham, um, even in the city of, of, of commentary scale, <coughs> you go to Foles Hill and you meet young people who just don't come even into the city centre because that bus journey is just too unaffordable for them and it doesn't feel safe to walk into that city centre. So we really need to work together to kind of look at how we build that culture habit, but absolutely that, that travel habit. The legacy that we kind of want to uh, look at, aside from sort of the green code, is just um, looking at how do we, as a cultural creative sector, how do we work with you so that we innovate and we uh, look at the creative future of our design and maker minds that's going to allow your various sectors to flourish over the next uh, millennia. How do we also build ecosystems that cross commercial, community and creative quarters um, that allow, again, local impact and local benefit in a, in a circular economy way be brought in, something that we're, we're exploring at the moment to value. Um, but equally, how do we look at legacy projects? 2021 is around the corner. Um, my five-year-old felt like she was a baby two days ago, but um, you know, 2021 is around the corner, so very much that locating, I'm six months old in post, locating what we're going to do for City of Culture isn't about 2021, it's about being, for me, looking over the hill and very much finding what's that destination point. And when I arrived, lots of people said to me, oh God, what green space are you going to work in? I said, well actually, Coventry is more than a green space and a ring road, but actually um, what I'm starting to believe now is, as our legacy, what could we leave? Could we leave us being a creative global city on the world stage? Could we leave uh, Coventry to become a national city park? Is that something that is possible by 2025 so that we join the likes of London and Glasgow and Canada? Do we allow ourselves to kind of be on a place where people power stewardship of our local environment actually allows us to be a place where well-being can grow and creativity can grow?